Assalamu alaikum. I hope you are doing well. Uh, well, first, I would like to thank you for the support, for the encouragement. Uh, trust me, every word you write in the comments, every text you send me, uh, encourage me is really helping me, pushing me uh, further to uh, enrich the content of this channel. And uh, I'm sure this is cannot be done without your support. So, as you know, this channel is for everyone, it's for all students that are going either to sit for an exam or even they are studying and they want to uh, to have more knowledge concerning the fields that I'm talking about, usually didactics or usually methodology, sometimes to talk about general knowledge that would help uh, students in general. So today I'm going to talk about methodology. Uh, as you know, those who are sitting for the PhD exam, I mean, you all are going to be, uh, you need to tackle this subject because you will, you'll be examined in this regard. So, uh, concerning research methodology, at first I would uh, state my opinion. It's not complicated, yet there is one small problem that all the concepts are really kind of, are really, uh, interconnected. So if you talk about one concept, you find yourself talking about another. And this will cause usually a problem. I do have this problem when I teach myself research methodology. I find sometimes I'm, talk I'm lecturing or talking about a specific lecture, yet I find myself, I find myself sometimes that talking about another criteria, sorry for this. So I'm talking about another point, which I'm, I should talk about maybe even uh, in a future le lecture. So let's try to break it down into simple concepts that you would understand, at least you would know how to. So first, you need to know the definitions. At least you, you, you need to be equipped with what is research methodology, what is special about it. In this regard, I'm going to share with you here a definition that I, I do find is so good. Uh, by the way, I'm also going to share my lecture with you. It's kind of a draft, so read it. If you find a mistake, please tell me. Don't criticize me. So we have research methodology is what is defined as systematic and refined techniques of thinking. And I want you to stop at this word because all about research methodology or researcher does is that we think. So it's about conceptualization. Thinking about what? Employing specialized tools, instruments and procedures to obtain more adequate solution of a problem than would be possible under uh, ordinary means. So, so sometimes with the using adhering to research methodology, you would find solution. The whole procedure start with, and here usually you tackle this, and it was called the research process. Within a problem, with a problem data collection, critical analysis, and uh, and finally reaching decision based, uh, based on actual evidence. And of course, it evolves from a genuine desire to know rather than a desire to prove something. I will come back to this word because it's also so important. This definition I use usually in my lectures, and I find it very, very accurate, very satisfying, for example, for me. So you know about research methodology. Then, of course, you need to know also about the idea of science or usually scientific knowledge. I find this very very important. So in this regard, let me scroll down a bit and let's talk about the characteristics of at least science in here. What do we have? We have replicability, precision, falsifiability, and parsimony. These are so important to know if you are dealing with any topic when it comes to research methodology. So we have, I will read from my lectures where all these are inter- uh, are interrelated, thus it's hard to talk about one, of course, about one criteria without referring to the other. So let's talk about replicability, it means that the researcher's account for the method he or she is going to use has to be accurate, comprehensive, and detailed. For why? This simply is going to allow researchers to independently replicate or repeat a scientific study and obtain similar, if not identical, results. That's one. Then there is, if one is able to reproduce the, uh, the uh, the, an experimental study, the author of the origin has to provide precise measurement and, of course, of the different concept and measurement and everything. So, at the end, to reproduce something, uh, we have the ability to reproduce the same variables and condition of the original research, allow the researchers to put the consistency of the work to the test. Thus, they will independently and impartially test pre-existing theories. So, here we are uh, trying to examine it. Well, when you find a result, we try to put it in the test. 
So all these concepts, of course, you will find them, uh, you find them in my lecture. So you have to know about these because they are so important. You can be asked about them. And there is the idea, of course, in my lectures I usually talk about, I talk about the idea of science. What is science? Because it's so important. And uh, in one of the, the exams, there, there was a question concerning the approach in scientific research, where they talked about uh, positivism and, and uh, post-positivism. And this lecture has a direct relation with, with that. So we have, for example, science as a result. What do we have as science as, as a, sorry, we first need to, uh, very sorry. So, okay, so we talk first about science as a social institution. Well, this is not I'm going to spend time talking about. Simply, if we are talking about some institutions, we are going to relate them to science. For example, if we talk about university, of course, that is going to be directly related to science. So we said science is looked at as a system or a community that provides totality of scientific establishment and structures of scientific services. The system also incorporates scientific ethos, social certification, social values, organizational, political and financial aspect of science. So this is if we look at science from different from the perspective as an institution. Now what's important to me is this one, the science as a process, because this is what I what I have talked about concerning the characteristics of science, the replicability, precision, falsifiability, and parsimony. So these are very important. Then you have the idea of science as a result. Also, is very important. Yet, there is, I have tackled this because there is one important question in academia: uh, what is what is more important? Is it the process or the result? You have to know that when, if we talk about uh, research methodology, we usually we uh, we lay heavy weight on the process, not the result. And this is going to take you back to the definition of Comar said that. Nothing is a failure when it comes to scientific uh, research methodology. Since you are adhering to strict, uh, systematic way of exploring or uh, gathering knowledge, everything is success. So this is also so important. You can find details there. Now, if there is one lecture that I would like you really to have a look and read is the characteristics of science. It's something so important. I always tell my students that is something they have to read and read again, even memorize if it takes so. so we talked about the four, the, the four uh, characteristics, replicability, precision, falsifiability, and parsimony. Now, these also can be further divided into more characteristics. And the good thing about these, they, you have always, you do need them to, you need to mention them all the time. So you have, uh, look here, you have objectivity, verifiability, systematic exploration, precision and accuracy, and reliability and ethicality. If you're doing any research, these words have to be in your mind. They have to be there in your research. If you are doing an exam, writing an exam, this is the gist of the any research. So even I can start defining, in fact, any research by saying uh, research methodology, the objective of research methodology is to yield research or knowledge that is objective, verifiable, were precise, accurate, reliable, and, eth and ethical. So they are always there. And I have provided uh, further definitions of each one I have explained for example, what is objectivity? The concept of objectivity stands as the lack of favoritism toward one side or another. You find all the detail there. You have the definition of verifiability, the systematic research. If you hear the word systematic research, you should know that it's the same thing as research methodology. It's the same thing. Systematic research, research methodology, they are synonyms. So, and of course, we talked about precision and accuracy. I always, my students have problem when it comes to these two words, they mix them together. So I provided definition here, accuracy and precision are two contribute that needs to be associated with scientific knowledge and research. Accuracy describes the difference between the measurement and the true value of the object of a study. So that is, uh, that is accuracy. What is precision is the degree to which several measurements of the same uh, objects show the same similar or result. Of course, I will explain further the, these concepts in another video. So this video, I'm just giving you like uh, a broad overview of what, what is there. You have reliability, of course, it has to do with 
the whole aspect of research you can find details and you have ethicality which is also very very important uh, in my lecture i have provided detailed information something that's going really to help you if you want to write an essay for example i said um uh for example we have an copy and agar 2000 line list seven standard that needs to be met honesty in reporting uh, of scientific data careful transcription analysis of scientific results independent analysis open sharing method sufficient validation to you see but because most of the time when i tell my students what is ethicality they just stick and talk about plagiarism no it's more than that it's really more than that so this lecture is uh, is important we talked about science and pseudoscience and here there is the talk about positivism and post-positivism i didn't talk about it i usually just mention them in on my lectures when i'm at the university but i can tell you they are very important to know what is how uh, positivism stand uh, in regard to what is scientific and what is not and what is post-positivism they are very important there uh, there was a question concerning that i think just in the past years i'm not sure when so this is at least to talk about research methodology of course after you talk about research methodology you need for, you, you need to talk about the process of uh, of process of doing research usually that is going to start with find with selecting a problem here also you find on my lesson for example the criteria of choosing a letter of choosing a problem you find the criteria uh, criteria so they are very important to memorize then of course in some process they say for example selecting the problem uh, narrowing the problem some even add limiting the problem of course precision is something that is so well is valued when it comes to research methodology later once the problem is selected of course you are going to talk about research questions now research questions also i have talked about them so what are the characteristics of research questions how they should be, the difference between research questions and the hypothesis, everything is there. Next, of course, if if there is the possibility to form a hypothesis in research, you can do that. It's not always uh, possible to form a hypothesis in research. This is something you should bear in mind. And once we talk about this, you are going to talk about the research with the methodology itself. Usually talking about data collection tools. What kind of data collection tools? You need to know the definitions of these data collection tools, the difference, the difference between them. And here is going to take you to the other aspect, an important aspect, which is the approach. Are we talking about quantitative or qualitative, or is the mixed method approach? Of course, although they, these can be, they seem like separate, or at least you deal with them at the level of methodology, but it's not the case. I always tell my students, that once you design or once you advance research questions, actually you, you have done everything. You can't ask a research question, you can't ask a research question, then later think about data collection tool. The moment you ask a question, you are sure that you are going to find the answer, that you have the tools to find answers. So this is why it gets really complicated. I'd say this, they find um, concepts so interrelated. Then after we talk about, there is the talk about a literature review. Now literature review is, where is the place of literature review? This is one of my questions I ask my students, who, even an exam. Some they say, no, it's the second step, it's the third step. No, it's actually a step you do it uh, with every step. You do it first to, to find the problem, to select the problem you find. It. You have to do a literature review. And once you find the problem, you have to, you have to do a literature review in, in order to narrow the problem and of course literature review has had specific function has specific functions for uh, specific functions for it so all this you are going to find also on my lecture so it's very important to to read about a literature review what is it etc then of course there is another point that maybe also you need which is writing a research proposal once you have a problem you have the methodology and everything you can advance a research proposal a research proposal in short is just a document that's going to be handed to a committee or scientific committee that's going to either approve or say no it's going to reject your work this is simple it has types etc also part of my lecture then all these things i've talked about data collection tools of course i'm going to talk about the population before you talk about the sample 
to talk about the sampling techniques. All these are very important to define and to know. And of course, uh, after you talk about this, you talk about data analysis procedure, which simply means how are you going to analyze this data, all of it? How are you going to analyze that data analysis procedure? Then, of course, at the end, we talk about uh, report, uh, report writing, which is the last step when you write your, your whether dissertation or thesis. So these steps, you need to know them. Of course, I talked about anti-qualitative uh, with everything when I talked about the characteristics of science. So, so expect any question in, in this regard dealing with, uh, with all these aspects. I'm going to keep this video short here, but I'm going, I promise that I'm going to add another video. I'm trying to explain some concepts that are so important also in research methodology. What I did here, just an overview and uh, overview of what, what you should revise. And I'm also sharing my lecture with you. I hope inshallah it's going to be so beneficial for you. So this is in short what uh, we have done here. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, please support this channel by commenting, subscribing, and sharing with you. Inshallah, we will succeed. So thank you so much and see you on my next video, inshallah.